Somebody say substantial. substantial. Say heavy. heavy. Say honor. honor. Splendor. Splendor. Say this heavy power. heavy power. Who's ready for some heavy power? Yeah. Heavy wealth. Yeah. Heavy authority. Yeah. What about this? Heavy magnificence. Where God make, makes you magnificent. Are you ready for that kind of praise? Are you ready for that kind of correction you're going to need? Imagine trying to disciple somebody who's magnificent or famous. Can people still tell you no? You ain't ready. If they can't tell you no now, you ain't ready for more later. Discipleship is part of that test. Who in your life tells you no? Dignity. Heavy riches. Ain't nobody want to hear me. You're all shouting a minute ago, huh? Heavy excellence. It's the heavy goodness of God. How many know you're going to build something that's heavy? How many of you ever, you know, you've seen those skyscrapers in the sky, huh? They go... 40, 50, 60, some of them up to 100 stories high. And you think, wow, that's a big building. But how many know as high as it goes, it goes in a way that, that much down. The, the foundation of that has to be so strong. They build it on rollers. and It's got to be able to handle the weight and the winds. Because the higher you go, the winds are higher. The storms are higher. And you have to have a foundation that can handle the, the weight of the glory. Some of you are too gifted. Some of you are going to go through more than others because of your giftings. Because of your talents, some of you are going to go th through more than other people. That's not fair. Yeah, it's very fair because you'll experience glory that they won't. Are you ready for me today? So we believe for that. How many are believing for more glory? Let, let me see your hand. Okay. So, so once you believe for the glory of faith, then, the, then that faith gets tested. Number two. Built through tested faith. Say tested. You see, faith that's not tested is faith that cannot be trusted. Everyone, say everyone, who is called by my name, whom I created and built for my glory, whom I formed and I made. Tell your neighbor, God has been working on you. Overtime on some of you, huh? Overtime. Some of you are like, man, why did we go through all that in 2020? Could it be like Brother Job 2020 prepared you for what's coming? Nobody liked it. We hated it. But nobody can say 2020 didn't change you. Hopefully it changed you for the better. You're not as fearful. If 2020 came and you became more fearful, it didn't work. It should have had the opposite effect on you. It tested your faith and your faith said, by his stripes I'm healed. Are you ready? I don't know if you're ready. Whether or not, I'm coming for you. Something's going to break today. I can feel something stretching. And in a minute, you're going to hear it snap. And this something's going to happen. Psalms 105.19 says, this is about Joseph. Until the time came to fulfill his dreams, prophetic promises, the Lord, read it, 
He tested. Or he what? Refined Joseph's character. You see, Joseph had a dream of greatness, great glory on his life. He even saw everyone bowing down to him. That means rulership, authority, great fame, great dignity, great wealth, great honor, great excellency, great dignity, great glory was coming on that boy. And he was given a grace coat and a glory coat at 17. But he wasn't ready for it. And so he finds himself 20 years in a process. And after 20 years of process of being thrown in a pit for death, betrayed by his family, then he was sold into slavery. He could have took the victim role. I'm a victim. I'm a victim. He overcome being a victim. Then he, he was falsely accused. He overcame haters, bitterness. Then he was put into prison and he overcame loneliness and isolation. Learned to be happy with nobody but him and God. He learned to make lemons out of lemonade and became a, a, a leader in every stage of his development. And finally, the, the day came when he was called by Pharaoh to the big house. And it, it didn't intimidate him. He was ready for it. And in a moment, he went from a prison to a palace. Why? Because he was built for the glory. And he was ready for it now. It didn't get to his head. It was so powerful in his life that when his brothers that betrayed him came, he could have just killed them and rejected them. But he literally said, you meant it for evil. And the devil meant this to take me out. But God used it for his glory. If you believe, you'll see the glory of God. And he turned this around. And now I'm here in a position to save many lives. And Joseph realized at this point, it's not about me and my coat and you bowing down. It's me saving lives. I've been developed. I'm ready. You see, metal is forged in the fire because it is built to withstand great pressure. And to last, so God forges us in the fire, the refiner's fire, because he prepares us for the glory. Glory means weight, heavy. Glory means pressure. So God has to prepare us for these next level blessings. He can't just give it to us too quick. Even in leadership, didn't the Bible say when a young man is, you see, he has a calling of God in his life. It's a gift on his life. The scripture says, don't put him in the position or office in the church yet. Why? Because he's too young. And lest he fall into the same condemnation as the devil, pride. He's not ready. So he says, let him be tested. Let him be proven. And it's not just like that in the church. Anytime God promotes you, that's what he says over your life. They have the talent. They have the gift. They have the call. But they don't have the character. So he says, just like the, he told the church, it's, God doesn't change. He says, don't put them in that position yet. Let them be tested. Let them be proven. So when it's time, they come forth like pure gold and they're ready. <laughs> Nobody likes the testing. Nobody likes the refiner's fire. Nobody likes the purifying of the Lord. But it's a requirement for the blessings of God. Abraham was tested. I was, uh, the other day, the other day I, because we're all going forward on the building. Hopefully by next weekend, I'll have a good announcement for you. But we're, we've already agreed on everything and praise the Lord. And, uh, but I told the guys, I said, this is a 17 year old promise. Almost 18 years old. I came here and the Lord sent me to Whittier. And then I got home and I prayed that morning and the Holy Spirit corrected me. He showed me a vision of me. And he, and he showed me me at, at my first school. It was called Plymouth. And when I got a job there. And he showed me on my bike. And how I would take my bike from La Puente for an hour and a half. And I'd take it to the bus stop on, on Workman Mill. And then from Workman Mill, it would take me all the way through the East Whittier, back end, Rose Hills, 
drop me off right there on Beverly and Workman Mill. And then from there, I'd get the, my bike, and then I'd drive the rest of the way to my work. And he says, the moment you step off the bike and put your foot on the soil of Whittier is the moment I gave you that building. It wasn't even in my mind. God didn't put it in my heart for eight more years. But in God's mind, at that moment, he goes, okay, now we're going to develop you to handle that kind of success. You know, you know how long ago that was? 25 years ago. That's, I, I feel like Abraham now. God told Abraham, you're going you're gonna, to you're have all the families of the earth are going to be blessed. I'll bless those who bless you. I'll curse him who curses you. I mean, God just laid it on that boy. He said, man, you're going to have these kids and nations and father of many nations. And, yeah, and then one year, two, three, 25 years later, and it finally came to pass. How many have quit before their 25-year mark? They thought it was going to come in the first five years, maybe the first seven, maybe the first eight, maybe nine, maybe the first ten. And if you quit, that, let, that lets you know you were never ready for it. Because something happened to Abraham in those 25 years that prepared him. At one point, Abraham was giving his wife up, remember? At another point, old crazy fool was trying to sleep with Hagar and have kids. And God's like, you ain't ready, man. Come on. He put that boy through the journey. And you don't ever hear about Hagar or him doing stupid things again. Don't judge, Abraham. What about some of you? Hey, three of you, three of you. Look at it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. You're too cool for school. All right. Jacob, remember Jacob? He had to go through his process. Joseph, 20 years. David, 20 years. He got anointed at 17. But he wasn't appointed till into his, well into his 30s. He didn't join Israel as a, as, a, as a unified nation for over 20 years. Paul was anointed at Damascus, called by God, but we find him in a wilderness for 17 years. Why does God do this to his people? Because he loves them too much to bless them before they're ready. There's a great minister I respect greatly. And he wrote a book many years ago. I read the book 30 years ago almost 30 years ago, and he read this in his book, and, and all his books were good, but this one book, I got, eh. but I got it, and I read it, and it ended up being one of the best books, and it was called, Can You Stand to Be Blessed, and at that time, I didn't really understand it all, I was like, well, this doesn't make no sense, but here I am 30 years later, that book, I understand, I get it now, there you go again, huh? Tell your neighbor, can you stand to be blessed? I do believe 2020 was a big preparation year for God's people. I believe it was a testing year, and it tested God's people greatly. One of the things that testing does is it purifies the motive why are you, believe, when you're believing God for something, the motive has to be pure. Sometimes when you're young, you want ministry for the wrong reasons. You want to be seen. You want to be known. Sometimes you want fame for the wrong reasons. You say it's for God, but really, it's for you. You say, I want to prosper because I want to bless God, but really, it's selfish. You say, I want my kids saved. But really, if they got saved, you wouldn't really be ready for it. Because you want them saved on your terms. But all of a sudden, they want to be in church seven days a week, and now it's too much. Don't act like this is not true. I've seen it happen. You're believing for your husband. He's a drunk. He's, a, he's a crazy. And he gets saved, and he's... I'm fire for God. And all of a sudden, you have a problem with too much wanting to be in church and serve God. Because it wasn't about him. It was about you. So when the faith is tested, it purifies the motive. 
why do you want to get married? Oh. No, I love her. I love him. Okay. But some people want to get married because they're lonely. But you have to beat that. Whether you're married or not, you're going to have to conquer that. Marriage doesn't fix loneliness. That's why I like the training center, how, how they go through that process. And it's good because when they get married, they're not going to have to learn it again. They're not going to have to learn that God will not be replaced by your wife or your husband or your kids or your job or anything else. Refiner's fire. If you're going to clap, then give them praise. This is a word. Come on, overflow. Now, can I keep going? Testing also produces confidence in God's will. Because, you know, I, I think I frustrate people more now than I did in the past in this area. Because when you have a moving organization, decisions have to be made quickly sometimes. And then they say, Pastor, we're going to do about this. And sometimes I'll say, just wait. Now, the team is pretty good now. But in, I think earlier, they, 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 the people didn't understand, like, why is he waiting? The, the money's there. The opportunity's there. Everything's good. We feel good about it. How many could be honest and say, there was times you thought something was God, and then you realized later you were just deceived? Four of you. Okay. <laughs> wow, you're doing better than me. I remember believing God for the house across the street. Me and my wife, believing for it. And, and we, we went through all these, because we had no money, so we went through like these government programs and all these hoops and all these things. And my friend got his house. And we gave $10,000, which was like every penny we had. And we did everything to get the house. And it fell through at the last minute. And we were devastated, brokenhearted. But as we stepped back month after month and year after year, we realized that would have been the worst decision we'd ever made. I wouldn't have been able to buy another house. And, but... We thought it was, we were convinced it was God. We were convinced. And that's why the testing of your faith is a beautiful thing because it allows you to identify, actually, that was never God's will. That was me. Because your own heart will deceive you. So now, before I make a move, if it's a big move, I just say, Nah, let me get a word on that. Why? Because my, I'm not emotionally invested in it. I can't be deceived now. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a blank sheet. Now I can come up to him and say, God, what do you want here? And he says, do this for me. Okay. Because I already know, the moment you take a step of faith, all hell breaks loose. And then all hell breaks loose and everything's telling you it's not going to happen, it can't happen. You need to have a word now before the storm. Let us go to the other side. So you can go back to God and say, Lord, you gave me a word. Now let's go fight. And now the journey's on. And that journey will be a testing of your faith that will actually prepare you to receive what you're believing for. Yep. So now like this new building... The way I felt a few years ago is not the same way. Like my friends are coming, we got a new building, and, and I'm trying to get excited about it, but I'm not excited about it. I'm only excited about it because of what God's going to use it to do for people. But there's no ego, there's no, look at you, Jason. That's, if that wasn't dead before COVID, COVID killed all that out. You know what I mean? Like if there's any left, if there's any of that left, COVID killed the rest of it. I'm up here preaching to an empty building for months. Ain't no shouting. Ain't no preach it, Bishop. Just by faith, people are watching. How do you know? Well, it says they are. That's why now, right now, right now, like, any pastor who hung through COVID and all that, uh, it's, you could see it in our eye. We look at each other like, you're real. <laughs> oh, you missed me. Come on. It's real. This brother's real. I don't, you speak in tongues. It don't matter. You're one of us, brother. Yeah. 
It didn't come out Superior Supreme Court, right, this week. They said, this is what they said, the only state in the union where it's proven that the government mistreated and really attacked the church. And I told you about that. It was not easy in Cali, especially Los Angeles. But you know what? Did you like it? I hated it. I hated getting up at 4.45 every morning and, and daily having God to tell me what to do. The pressure. But, but it was a lot of pressure. Cry myself to sleep pressure. Come on. What, you can't get real with you? Would I change it? Never. Some of you found yourself in some storms last year. Some of you are in storms right now. I encourage you, keep the faith. Hold on to your promise. And let God develop your character. And when all is said and done, you're going to see the glory of the Lord in your life. Somebody ought to shout like you believe God. And what happens in testing? You develop what I call a knowing. A knowing that you know. That you know that you know. Like a, like a swag to your drag. A pep in your step. A crip. Come on, somebody. To your, come on. And they're like, what, what happened to him? What happened to him? You're like, what? Huh? What is it? What? What? What, what, what's up with you? I said, man, I know. What do you know? I know. What do you know? I know that I know that I know. What you know? I know that 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 I know. You can't shake me from what I know because I've been through the fire and I've been through the flood. Somebody ought to shout like you know. I know something. I got inside information. Pop the collar. Come on, somebody. Who am I talking to today? How many know that you know that you know that you know that you know? Can I, can I keep teaching? Don't rush me. Everybody's been rushing me all day. First Peter 1 Peter 1.7, the genuineness. Say the genuineness of your faith. And that's what we're looking for now, genuine. That's that pure faith you have now. Jesus said you don't need a lot of that kind of faith. Just a little bit. That mustard seed faith. So I, got, I got a lot of faith. No, 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 no. no. Not, it, it, I'm not talking about faith and doubt mix. Faith and worry mix. I'm talking about the pure, unadulterated amen of God. Come on. I'm talking about the pure, pure, pure stuff. I'm talking about that kind of faith that's unmovable. That unshakable faith. That knowing deep down on the inside. That pure faith. And it's more precious than gold. Because if you got that kind of faith, you ain't got to worry about no money. What are we going to do? Go, go fishing. First fish you catch, open its mouth, pull the money, pay the bill. You move on another, come on. Oh. All these people, how are you going to feed them? You feed them. Huh? Feed them. They're hungry. There's 5,000, Lord. What do you got? Two fish, five loaves? Vamanos. Feed them. <laughs> and them disciples like, huh? That's that pure. That's that pure faith. That's that pure. That's, that's a different level. That's that pure. That's, that's that Lazarus faith. Raising Lazarus. Remember, he said, I told you, Mary, if you believe, you would see the glory of God. Now roll away the stone. And they're like, he stinks, Lord. And Lord's like, I didn't say nothing about no stink. Roll the thing away. Obedience. Roll the stone. Pure faith. Lazarus! 
Come forward. And pre- I heard this preacher say, and it was so good, that he had to say the name because if he said any other name, come forth, every, that person would have come up out the tomb. <laughs> that was that faith. And, and, and then all of a sudden, somewhere at Lazarus floating around in Abraham's bosom, talk, talking to, you know, Abraham, hey, Abraham, go in the Lazarus, oh, I got to go. <laughs> Lazarus' spirit jumped back in his body. His body resurrects. Mirror come out there. <laughs> People are like, well, I want that kind of power. You, you don't want, you're not ready for that. I'll scare you. Everybody wants to raise the dead until you do it. <laughs> now you're looking at them. The good on there, what is this, a ghost? <laughs> I think four days, guys, he's dead. He stinks. He's wrapped up, mummified. He's coming out. Say, pure faith, pure faith, pure faith. Uh, Though tested and purified by fire, may be found to result, and this is the the end result, say, praise, Praise. glory, Glory. and honor to Jesus Christ. Now, can we go deeper? Yes Yes or no? Say, come on, pastor. Let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. Okay. Number three. Say this way. Say this. I am built built through patience. patience. You see, patience is a developer of character. And there's certain character qualities that you'll, you and I develop when we, when we become patient. And two of those are the character quality of contentment and the character quality of endurance. And those are very valuable qualities when it comes to handling the glory of God. In Romans 5, 3, and 4, it says, we glory in what? Tribulations. Now, I know, you don't want to say that, but I know. Now listen, let me help you with this. We're going to stay in the middle of the road, right? All right, we're going to stay in the middle of the road. Now, God's not sending the tribulation. The devil sends them to take you out. But God will take what the devil means for you evil, and God will turn that thing around. So we got to get that straight. Secondly, God gives rest. So you're not going to always be in a tribulation. Unless that's the calling of God on your life, which is very rare. Like Paul the Apostle. And I don't think there's too many of you. Because sometimes people read these kind of scriptures and they, they get sadiomascus in the spirit. Where every time you talk to them, they're in the fire. How you doing, brother? In the trial. A year later. How you doing? In the battle, brother. Three years later. How you doing? I'm in the fire. No breakthrough. <laughs> you're, you're greater than Paul, brother. You're greater than Paul. At least Paul had a little break. Say, middle of the road. Middle of the road. Okay. I just want to make sure because I got I to gotta define it because some of you get real spiritual on me. And you'll start praying for trials. Oh, Lord, send the trial. The Lord's like, oh, the devil's doing that. I'm not going to send it to you. Send the trial, Lord. I want to get stronger. It'll come. Don't worry. Just keep serving God. Believe. And that's it. It'll happen. Okay? Okay? And don't worry about it. Somebody like, oh, the trial. Don't worry. It'll come. And when it comes, you'll be ready for it. Hopefully. Okay, now. <laughs> I'm just playing. God will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able to bear. We glory in tribulation. Say we glory in it. Why would we glory in tribulation? I mean, 2020 was horrible in the natural, right? No? I didn't like it. I mean, I like going to the movies. No movies. They shut my movie theater down. Right? I like going to restaurants. Any kind of restaurant. Ain't no restaurant. Nothing. No food. You can't, you can't go. Danny's. No Danny's. What? Not even Danny's. No pancake. Huh? Huh? Nothing, right? Then, and then... Yeah, and then I'm a Laker guy. I like to go to Laker a couple times a year, you know? No staples. Then they brought basketball back and no crowd. It's a fake crowd. Ah. At one point, they had fans on the screen. <laughs> That's the crazy, man. That's a, how do I get on there? Ah. <laughs> Not famous enough, you know what I mean? But just saying, you know? Everything like, what? what is, that's horrible. But why would you glory in that? Why would you glory in that? I mean, well, we know that tribulation, okay, produces perseverance. Okay, patience, okay. And patience produces character. And character produces hope and manifestation. Oh, so you don't get to hope and manifestation until you get character. And you can't get character until you get patience. And you don't get patience until you go through tribulation. Now I know why I glory. I'm not glorying in the tribulation. I'm glorying in the promise. And the process is this. And you can't change the process. You can't change it. It's the process. Tell your neighbor, it's the process. So what's the process? Because 
Gold, say gold. Gold, gold is, comes from dirt, right? Yes. Yes? yes? So when you find gold, it's all full of what? Dirt. So what they do is they put it in the refiner's fire. And they get the dirt and they get the gold and they put it in a, in a melting pot. And it gets so hot that all the dirt, the dross, the, un, the unclean, unpure minerals that's not gold comes to the top. And then the goldsmith has a skimmer and he just skim, gently skims the top and gets all that junk off because it's useless. Throws it away. And he keeps burning and he just keeps skimming and skimming until what's left? Pure gold. And that's what God does in our lives. And that's what the tribulation does. And God uses it to skim off our lives everything that doesn't belong there and everything that's going to hinder us later on. And he skims and he skims and he skims and he skims. Why? 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 Because the glory was held on the ark. And the ark was made out of pure beaten gold. It was pure and it was beaten into a mold. And that's what tribulation does. It purifies us and God beats us into the mold. And when that mold's done, God says, now release the glory because they can handle the blessing I'm going to give them. Freedom, that's what God has said to you in the spirit realm. He's purified us, he's beaten us, and he says, now is the time for my glory. Now, let me, let me, let me, let me go. Can I keep going or not? You want more or no? I'm here. We're here. Okay. The early church called patience the queen of all the virtues. All the virtues. They said that's the queen of all of them. And one of the character, character traits that patience produces is a character trait, and I, I pray you get this. This will make you, this will set somebody free today. It's called the character trait of contentment. Contentment means I'm satisfied with where I'm at right now. I'm believing God for more. I'm trusting him for the breakthrough. But I know I'm not putting my satisfaction on hold. And when that happens and that happens, then I'll be satisfied and happy. No, I'm going to be blessed today while I'm waiting for my breakthrough tomorrow. That's a lesson that so many never learned. Let me make this quote again to you. If you're not satisfied today with what you have, getting more won't fix it tomorrow. Getting married won't fix it tomorrow. Getting more money won't fix it tomorrow you got to learn that this is the day that the lord has made and let us rejoice in it and be glad when you're younger and if you're not careful and you it'll it'll it'll, it'll become a pattern when you're older you'll keep putting off your satisfaction and happiness Till tomorrow, till tomorrow, till tomorrow. And then God blesses you, and then what? Thank you, Lord. And then there's another, tomorrow. And then there's tomorrow. And God's saying, no, 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 no. I want to teach you, Israel, how to be satisfied today. And what's the lesson? It's the same thing he taught to Abraham. I am El Shaddai. I am all you need. I am all sufficient. I am all you need. Because if, if you don't learn, and I don't learn that lesson, what ends up happening is God blesses you with a husband or a wife or a good family or a career or prosperity or whatever, or ministry. And if you're not careful, before you know it, you have replaced God with those things. And you have to learn that God is all you need. And some of you have learned that. You have learned that. So, you go, no, I need this boyfriend. No, you don't. I need this girlfriend. No, you don't. I need this job. No, you don't. I need this career. No, you don't. You have everything you need. You have God. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. 
Somebody ought to clap. I'm helping somebody today. Come on. Come on. Let me help you. Say, I have God. That's what I love about the training centers. They, they, they learn this early. Early. But you're going to have to learn it. See, Paul said, I'm not telling you this because I'm in need. For I have learned to be satisfied in any circumstance. I know what it, I know what it means to lack and I also know what it means to experience overwhelming abundance. For I am trained in the secret of overcoming all things, whether in fullness or in hunger. And I find that the strength of Christ's explosive power infuses me to conquer every difficulty. So the end result of patience, developing character, is the character trait of contentment, which also can be defined as dependency dependency upon God and that's what happened to Israel for 40 years they're in a wilderness and what do they learn in that 40 years they learned a word called dependency because every morning they would go out and there would be bread called manna from heaven and they'd pick it up and they eat it you know what God would tell them don't try to store it for tomorrow if you store that bread for tomorrow that bread will become worms and it'll become worms in your mouth the blessing will become a curse and for 40 years, they had to learn how to live in a land called barely get by. A land of just enough. What was God teaching them? I'm your manna. I'm your bread from heaven. I'm all you need. I'm your all sufficiency. And after 40 years, they learned it. You know what God said? Now you're ready for the glory. Now you're ready for the promised land. And they went from wilderness for 40 years. And within a few days, they were in a promised land with more than enough vineyards they could save for years and God warned them when you get those houses not a house houses when you get the wealth and you get the prosperity and you get the glory make sure you don't forget the lesson you learned in the wilderness I don't know who I'm preaching and warning but God says I'm bringing you into a place of abundance. I'm bringing you into a place of glory. And don't forget the Lord your God. Sit down. You said you wanted more. Some of you are squirming a little bit. No, you're good. Say, I'm good, Pastor. The testing of your faith develops another word, in the area of patience, and it's called perseverance or endurance. The word patience means to be underneath something, to remain in your spot, to keep a position and a stance, to make up your mind to maintain some territory that has been already gained. You know, when I was in high school, we started working out with weights. Freshman year, football. And we started out with like, uh, we were all you know, trying to be strong. But we, the coach started us out with like 25-pound dumbbells on each side and a 45-pound bar. And you go, oh. And then you go, okay, now you're ready to add a little more. And you put a 10 on each side. And then some guys were stronger. You know, could do that. And then, then some guys, we put the 45s on at 135 pounds. And as the years grew, I kept working out. And then I got to a point where I was able to put two on, two, two dumbbells. And now you're like, two. That's, that's over 200 pounds. <laughs> and then one time, we kept working out, working out. And I, I was able finally to put three dumbbells on. And I bench pressed it twice. Bling. It does that, too. Bling. <laughs> and you feel like things are going through your body. And you just put that thing up. And you jump up. And you look at all the guys. What's up? I was done but if I would have tried to do those three dumbbells in my freshman year of high school it would have killed me it would have crushed me and that's what patience does it's a spiritual bench press and it's preparing but I want more God's like you're not ready for more just work with what you have work with what you have because you think you got haters now wait till you come up you ain't seen nothing learn to love now learn to forgive now learn to be patient come on somebody Patience is not a biblical word. It's actually derived from a, a military word from Rome. And then Paul saw it. He says, that's what God does in our lives. 
It actually is a military word that was given to soldiers. Look at this. To hold their position in the middle of fierce adversity and battle. Sounds like 2020. Let me quote that again. <laughs> hold your position, leader. You're a family group leader? Yeah. Hold your position. Hold your position, soldier. You're believing God, right? Yeah, hold your position. You're trusting God, correct? Yes, hold your position. <laughs> Patience is a military word that was given to soldiers to hold their position in the middle of fierce adversity and battle. To do this, soldiers had to have great courage and great character. 2020 tried us like nothing else tried us. And in that year, many of you held your position. And you didn't realize by holding that position and doing it by faith and believing God by faith was preparing you for the glory of 2021. <laughs> you see, patience develops this character quality of persistence, tenacity, determination, endurance, becoming steadfast, unmovable. I love this term. It allows you to outlast and outlive your enemies. That's a quality. That's a quality of character. Over 30 years of ministry. I've had people come against me. I've, you know, now I don't listen to them. So even if you try to make comments, I don't hear them anymore because I just don't listen to stupid people. But they, back in the day, I didn't know that they, they, people can talk to you through Facebook. And they would say ugly things about me and our church. Oh, he's talking another offering. Well, they're stupid. How are you going to build the church without another offering? With a, what, Bank of America going to give me an offering? <laughs> I, I even had even stupider people say, all they do there is preach about getting saved. <laughs> and it affects you. you. You read it, you go, oh, maybe, do I do that? Of course I do that. I need to do that. And I'm going to pick up more offerings. Of course I am. I'm going to build my father's house. Well, you know what I've noticed? I outlasted everybody. 30 years, so-and-so talking about you, so-and-so don't like you, so, so, oh, okay, where are they? Oh, they're gone, oh, here, another one, hey, hey. yeah, okay, cool, where are they? They're gone, pastor, oh, okay, 10 years later, huh? another one, oh, they're talking about you, you don't like, oh, and then another one, oh, uh, for, pretty soon you just go, oh, and then after a while you just, You outlast them. I said you outlast every enemy. Talk about me, hate on me. It don't matter. You can't stop me. Come on, Balaam. You can't curse what the Lord done bless. Now somebody ought to give God a praise like you're going to outlast. Now get on your feet. We're going to wrap this up. You did so. Give yourself a big hand. You done so good today. Here, last night I was... It was about 12.30 at night and I'm praying. My message is done. I've already sent it. But I'm sitting there and I'm still staring at my message and I'm like, ah, Lord, there's something else. What else do you want to say to your people? Because there's something I'm missing. I know it's not a lot, but it's something. And I, and I couldn't get it. So I went, to, I went to lay down. I started reading. And as I was reading, it hit me. Boom, I got it. And I said, ah, oh, this is it. Patience and <laughs> endurance helps to develop you ready the character traits of obedience and faithfulness obedience don't think obedience is a small thing God's watching obedience it's easy to obey God in the good times 
It's will you obey God in the tough times. It's easy to lead in the good times. It's easy to lead when everybody's crying your name, Hosanna. But will you still lead when they say, give me Barabbas? Will you still lead when they call out, crucify him? And I believe there's many in our church, and not just freedom, but all over, that as tough as it, 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 it got for people, 2020, you never left your position. You were tempted to, but you got a resolve in you. Like Martin Luther King Jr., I just want to do God's will. And you've become solidified in the fact that I just want to do God's will. If you want to, if you want to do it with me, great. If you don't, great. But I'm just going to do God's will. I'm 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 going to be like Queen Esther. Remember Queen Esther? Remember Queen Esther? Remember they asked her, Queen Esther, would you approach the king on behalf of our nation? And she knows if I go unannounced, I could die. You know what Queen Esther says? I just want to do God's will. She says, pray for me. I'm going to the king. And if I die, then I die. But could it be that God has called me into the kingdom for such a time as this? And I'm telling you, 2020 gave us resolve, endurance, commitment, steadfastness. And we're not about to give it up now. I believe God's glory is coming like never before. And we're about to see the glory of God like we've never seen. Who's believing God? You're going to see the glory of God like you've never seen before. Would you give him a praise like you believe the Lord? That's true. Hebrew said, you will, then you will not be sluggish, but you're going to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. And so after Abraham patiently endured, he obtained God's promise. You see, church, we count those blessed who endured. You have heard of the endurance of Job? Endurance of Job? Have you heard of the endurance of Brother Job? And have you seen the outcome of the Lord's dealings in his life? Don't just look at Job's trial. The Bible says, no, look at Job's endurance. I'm a, last year was tough. You know, I'm a Kobe fan. Kobe died and it took me like a month just to like, wow. We, all, we grew up with Kobe. And then the Kobe, oh, it was tough. But I remember Kobe saying, he, Kobe said something one time. He came back from his injury. And he didn't play very well. We were like, oh, man, this is it. This is it over? Then he went to Germany and some supernatural thing happened. I don't know what it was. Came back like he was 20. Snapped up. But he, told, he said this on the press conference. I never forgot it. He says, oh, it's just me and the team. We have Bambi legs. You know what a Bambi leg is? You know when Bambi tried to stand up in the movie and he's wobbly? He said, but we need a few more games, get some endurance, some conditioning, and then we'll be fine. And I think a lot of us had some Bambi legs. But I believe those Bambi legs have become like deer legs now. And you've developed that endurance. Oh, I'm talking to three people. Maybe four. Maybe you, Pastor Miguel. Maybe I'm talking to you, huh? Tell your neighbor you got some endurance now. You got some endurance. You see, Job... He went through some things. He lost his home. He saw, there was death. His family. He lost his finance. Job went through it. And, and God did it. No, no, read it. Satan did it. Satan attacked that boy. Take him out. And Job was in the middle of a sickness and he's messed up, man. And what does his wife say? curse God and die and Job looked at her and said girl you tripping you think I'm just going to serve God in the good time and not serve God in the bad time I made a commitment I serve God in the good time and I serve God in the hard time I'm obedient, I'm faithful I'm reliable and is, isn't it brother Job that said this when he's tried me I shall come forth like pure gold and you know what happened in the end of Job's struggle tribulation 
became perseverance. Perseverance became character. And character became hope and promise. And the Bible says that God gave Job twice as much as he had before. Double for his trouble. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I believe God is about to double this ministry. He's about to double your prosperity. He's about to double your authority. He's about to double your dignity. He's about to double your fame. He's about to double your wealth. He's about to double, 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 double. See, church, you need endurance so that after you've done what God wants you to do, you can receive what he's promised. We've been doing the facts checks on what's happening. I don't know if some of you realize the building we're getting is, it's about a $45 million thing. It's a miracle. And as the leader, I'm in charge. And I'm ready for it. It's easy now. I've been prepared. Our church, we're going to fill that thing the first day. The first day we're going to have to open up another campus. Ready, I'll grew it. I'm ready for it. But I felt the Lord say, but that's a sign for the church, Neil. Like you're ready for the next level, so are they. And I don't know what you've been through. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to prophesy. You've been through the fire. And you've been through the flood. But God, he's bringing you, your family, and this church into a place called a wealthy and broad place. So get ready. You're ready. I know you're ready. Why? You've been built for this. Slap your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you've been through the fire, you've been through the flood, but get ready for a wealthy place. And slap them and say, because you've been built for this. Tell your other neighbor, you have been built for the glory. Now lift your hands to heaven. Nothing. Now lift your hands and we're going to confess. Then we're going to pray. Say, Father, I realize now that, that through this tribulation, my faith has been tested. And in Jesus' name, I shall come forth like precious gold. And in the, in the name of Jesus, I am ready to receive your glory, your weight, your, ble your blessing, your honor, your splendor, your power, your wealth, your authority, your magnificence, your fame, your dignity, your riches, your excellence, and your heavy goodness in my life. And I promise, no matter how much you bless me, I'll never replace you. I'll never put nothing or nobody in front of you. You're my everything. You're my all in all. Now, Lord, take us, all of us, into the promised land. We're ready, we're willing, and we're well able to take the land for your glory, for your honor, for your praise. Now worship God. Let your glory. Come on. Thanks for watching Freedom. Be sure to check us out on all social media platforms and subscribe to us on YouTube. We hope you enjoyed today's video. We'll see you soon.